Right, Toe Shot, long and last one from you. Uh, well, David Miliband is one of those politicians I always think, quite frankly, he looks like a Thunderbird's puppet. <laughs> <laughs> he does! Or that, or that um, uh, Action Man doll. You know, he's got that dodgy hair that looks a bit like a wire brush that ends up here. <laughs> um, Anyway, Hillary Clinton finds him unbelievably attractive. She says, that it, she told an interviewer in American Vogue that she found David Miliband vital But then again, and attractive. she's probably only met him and Gordon Brown, though, hasn't she, for the <laughs> British politicians? And you know what he said about her? Um, she's someone who, can, who laughs and can tease, and she's got perspective as well. I mean, pass the sick bag. <laughs> <laughs> Can't they just get on with solving love you, peace, peace I really in Afghanistan <laughs> and play down the bloody personal compliment? <laughs> <laughs> Neither of them are particularly attractive. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> Go on, Scott, what have you got for us? Uh, I've got uh, page six of The Sun, a rogue member of staff at T-Mobile who has sold uh, thousands of their customers' private details to rival firms. Firms. Uh, the other mobile firms say they have nothing to do with this. The information passed on to those firms that you know the ones that can cold call you uh, um, okay, yeah. just before their contracts are about to expire. Uh, Team Mobile are saying likely, obviously, there'll be a prosecution and the data protection watchdog entered the premises with search warrants and okay. got this person. Uh, the Sun on page nine. Geordie, Ch this is quite interesting. Geordie Chandler's dad has committed suicide. Um, this is Geordie got the uh, check for eighteen million pounds yeah. from Michael Jackson. The Sun says, just five months after the death of Jacko, uh, he was found in bed with a single gunshot to his head uh, in an apartment block in New Jersey, a uh, gun still in his hand, didn't leave a note, but uh, they're saying that officers did find medication for a serious medical condition, so who knows okay. what happened. Okay. Uh, this from the Mail, page 11, I bet Janet's going to have something to say about this, Ben Elton, off to Australia, so before he went, or decided to have a pop at the... Royal family, before he goes. Uh, called the Queen a sad old lady and Prince Philip a mad old bigot who wishes it was still the war. I just hate it when uh, people like Stephen Fry said the other day, I'm thinking of living in America. It's almost like they've become the quasi-royalty. Do we really care no. where Ben Elton's living? I mean, frankly, it's not going to ruin my day. This is a friend of Ben Elton. I really like him, and I've I've read quite a lot of his books, and I yeah. think he's a pretty decent writer. Yeah. But I, I don't know what happens when people say things like "I'm off." Well, Cheerio. I mean, Ben's got an Australian wife, hasn't he? So yes, and he I mean, has so been spending half the year there, here and half the year there. But I don't think it's too graceful to make these uh, remarks slanging off this country when we know he'll be back in five minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very true. You done? One, uh, more. One more. One more. Telegraph: the story of the boy who had a school phobia. Oh, yeah. Uh, he de <laughs> develops chronic anxiety after having a viral illness when he first joined the secondary school in Suffolk. Um, apparently, it's a school phobia which less than 1% of pupils are affected right. by. Um, but Suffolk County Council have now had to uh, apologise because they try to prosecute for truancy and they're now saying mm. that it was unlawful discrimination. <laughs> And finally, down the end. Well, it's interesting because not everybody. I mean, school doesn't suit everybody. Some people just can't cope with it. You, know, you mm. look at those American schools on television. You think, ooh, how could anyone cope with those? Anyway, uh, uh. Um, front page of the Daily Mirror. This is a, a court case. I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of over the next few days and probably the next few weeks, actually. But it's a horrific, horrific story. I'm afraid of a mum of two, uh, Gita Olak, um, from South London or West London, actually. She's a 28-year-old mum of two, and she was found um, very near. I think she was going to get her kids from the childminder. Um, and she was found very near, and she'd been attacked. Um, she died of head wounds later, but they cut off her hand as well, which is... I mean, it's a gross and it's really, really horrible murder. Um, and men have been arrested and are answering police inquiries. Amongst those men is her ex-husband, yeah. but we don't know any more yeah. about it. We will learn more, I'm sure. Hey, this is a really interesting as well. In the Daily Mail, it's called Sleeping Strangler, and this is a case of a man who killed his wife while he was asleep. Yeah, OK, but he, he's uh, all his life suffered from a sleep disorder um, and his lawyers are arguing and the prosecution is agreeing that this is a case of automatism. Now, you usually only ever hear this in American, American sort of legal dramas, don't you? We've and this the, is we've where... we the old one over here. We've yeah, he literally did not know what he was doing. He was either asleep or he was in some sort of a, a weird other place. But uh, uh, he imagined to himself or dreamt or something that they were being attacked and that he was strangling a burglar. And he wasn't. He was, he was... When he woke up, he found he had strangled his wife, called the police. Um, and the, the, as I say, the prosecution in this case are agreeing with 
the defence that this is not a case of murder. This is a case that they're arguing for a different sort of whether verdict. Whether it be manslaughter or Whether it be manslaughter or... or yeah, they're yeah. going to argue his degree of responsibility, but they're not arguing for murder. I've told the story before. Uh, my girlfriend had a big operation, and uh, I don't know whether I was stressed out about that or not, but in my sleep I had a dream in which I was fighting people, and I woke up just after I'd rabbit-punched her right where all her stitches were and everything. Oh. So things can happen. Yeah, it's the only thing I've ever done on I don't have trouble with well, sleep, As I say, so. I don't think the prosecution would be agreeing on no, this no, if no, it wasn't no, a no, really... No. Apparently, he has suffered from this problem all his life. Um, next one is that um, uh, if your kids are on one of these internet um, chat uh, sites, these uh, social networking sites, um, this one is Bebo. Bebo. Um, uh, they've agreed to put um, a panic button on it that you, the kids can press if they feel they're being abused in any way online or groomed or anything like that, and it will alert I see, well, I just don't understand police. here. I mean, I suppose you... I'm sure the whole point of grooming is you don't let on about no. the fact that you're an adult until they are, meet you in whatever well, dark alley that, that you arrive in. I and at that point, if you're there not going to have a, a button, panic button. If there is a button there, I don't know how, how obvious it will be, but if there is a button there, it might just get them to thinking about maybe, that. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, at the moment, Facebook and MySpace are saying they've got their own way of doing things, so they're not going to put this button on it. But it's interesting that people are. Their wives. How do they Whatever. stop people bullying? Uh, each other. We've had a lot of cases in this country recently of school uh, school children bullying each other on the yeah. internet and we've had the first case of successful prosecution where a girl was sent to a secure offenders uh, institution for bullying a schoolmate and nobody did anything. So yeah. all I say is if they've got these controls in place now, they don't work. No. Because no. bullying on the internet is a massive it's problem. It's a huge problem. And text yeah. messages as well. And one last one for you. Um, well, th uh, this is another one that Janet was talking about, you know, having an extra mum now in our government. Um, the uh, Department of Health is now going to give um, an 83-point questionnaire to all parents whose five-year-olds are just about to go to school. And you'll be asked um, all these sorts of questions about whether your child eats red meat. <laughs> Um, but but in, even more interesting is, and this is a parent who's going to supposedly answer this honestly, um, is your child considerate of other people's feelings? Does he, does he often lie or cheat? Um, does he steal from home oh, yes, or yes. elsewhere? He's a liar, he's a cheat, he steals. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, it's quite, quite normal behaviour. I'll tick those boxes. How much moderate physical activity does he oh, do? Oh, loads and loads and loads. Very fit child, very fit child. Yet more boxes to tick. <laughs> OK, uh, after the break...